Bristol, where I live, if you didn't know, is quite a hilly city. And that makes cycling around town a bit of a pain in the arse, if I'm totally honest. If you've got a lot of stuff with you, whether it's your shopping or other bits of luggage, you're constantly having to grind your way up steep hills. I'm quite lazy, and this means that I have a penchant for using my van far too much when I'm just doing those short trips around town. That all changed when the Reese and Muller Multicharger Vario showed up in the bike radar headquarters. As you can see, it's a cargo bike with a motor, and that makes life an awful lot easier when you've got a week's worth of shopping in the rear pannier bags. Obviously, there are a lot of cargo bikes without motors, but if you're going to live somewhere hilly or if you're carrying heavy loads, I reckon an e-bike version of one is a great way to go to reduce your reliance on normal combustion engines. This isn't really a bike, it is a bike, but for me it's more of like a, an urban transport solution. It's quick and nippy through the traffic. You don't get held up by cars and buses. You can go on the cycle lanes, but you don't have to get everywhere really sweaty. It's a really good way to get around town. Now, Reese and Miller make various versions of the multi-charger, and this is the Vario one. And that's because it has this Violo hub gear at the back. Now, normal gears have step changes between each of them, and this one has, it's called a CVT, a continuously variable transmission. So there's no actual gears, but it's sort of on a sliding scale between low and high. It's quite smart. You can actually change gears when you're not moving, which is really handy if you've got heavy loads at a traffic light. Connecting the rear hub to the motor is a gate belt drive. Now this means minimal maintenance because it doesn't need oiling or anything and it doesn't really stretch in theory, so nice and simple. There's a Bosch Performance CX motor. Now this is what provides the drive to the rear wheel and it's quite a common motor we've seen on a lot of e-bikes. It's got four modes, but if I'm totally honest, I leave it in turbo all the time. Now most bikes come with a 500 watt hour battery, such as this one here. Inside here is another one though, so I've actually got a thousand watt hours of power. It obviously leads to the bike being really heavy, but it doesn't seem to matter that much. You have to take the batteries out to charge them, but they reckon you can get about 60 miles of range on turbo, depending on how hilly it is and how much cargo you've got. In reality, this means I charge it, I don't know, every couple of weeks of pretty much daily use, so I'm pretty happy with that. Up front there's a suspension fork just to keep things a bit more comfy if you're going up and down some curbs and at the back there's a thud buster seat post just to keep your bum that much more comfortable on rougher terrain. One of the other really neat features I love about this bike is the always on lights. So they're connected to the battery and okay you can turn them on and off should you wish but you've got a front and a rear light that is always on for loads of safety and it means you're never going to forget to charge your lights or bring them along. Another neat feature is that the lock that is situated on the seat tube uses the same key as the two battery releases, so you only need one key to keep the bike charged and keep it safe. It's possible to get a number of sort of add-ons for the bike. Now, it comes with the orange pannier racks as standard, so there's one up front so you can put your beer crates on there, and there's this one on the back. The bike I have comes with these two pannier racks, and you do pay extra for those, but you can also get a little handlebar there, and there are some foot pegs, so you can take a passenger, so long as they're not too heavy. So, the base model of the bike is £4,289 with a 500 watt hour battery. You have to pay an extra £839 for that second battery because e-bike batteries are so expensive and this is why e-bikes cost so much money. Now if you want to carry a passenger, the handlebar and the foot pegs comes to £149 and if you want the luggage carrying capacity of these Reason Muller pannier bags, that's £140. It's a substantial amount of money for this particular bike, but if you are looking at e-cargo bikes as a general thing, there are a wide range of prices out there, so don't be put off by this particular model. Within my job as a technical editor at Bike Radar, I've quite often got to get bikes to and from work. If I've got a test bike and I've got it at home and I need to take it in, I could ride it in, but then quite often I'll find myself stranded and can't really get home without getting the bus. One of the things I've done, as you might notice, is build a non-standard bike rack for this bike. You can tell it's non-standard because 
it's quite obviously Heath Robinson and I'm pretty sure Rees and Muller wouldn't make something quite so ugly for their bikes. It is however pretty functional. I've got a boost fork axle mount here, the down tube BB area rests on here and I can strap it in and then these bags handily take the wheels as well so I can get bikes to and from work really easily. Because of that 60 kilo weight limit on there as well, as I said, I've done massive weekly shops with this bike. So by using this bike for those short journeys, I'm contributing to good things. First off, from a more general point of view, short trips in a diesel engine is pretty bad for the environment. There's a lot of localized pollution and diesel is big in the news at the moment. So I'm doing my bit. The other part of that is a cold engine wears out quicker and by not driving those little two, three, four mile trips, it means my engine isn't being put through those stresses. So hopefully it'll last longer and drive more efficiently when I do have to do those longer trips. Finally, in a city like Bristol where there is so much traffic, I actually don't think this is any slower. Okay, above 15, 16 miles an hour, this is an absolute lump to pull around when the motor cuts out. But most of the time you're not doing that anyway, so you can just weave through traffic and it's pretty chill. Now, I don't want to get too sort of religious about this bike, but it has in many ways kind of changed my life a little bit. In all the years I've been doing stuff with Bike Radar, I've never bought a bike. I, I, I love a lot of the bikes I've ridden, but they've all gone back and I'm not really shedding any tears over that. This is the only bike in six years almost now of doing this that I'm trying to buy because it has genuinely changed the way I live in this city. So what do you think about this as a solution to all the problems we're facing with urban transport in the 21st century? Please let us know your thoughts in the comments. In the meantime, don't forget to like and subscribe and click that little bell symbol too because then you'll get notifications about all the new videos from Bike Radar.